basically going to focus on what my personal experiences have been with uh, Scilab and also I've been using Scilab in a couple of uh, my courses that I've been teaching over the last uh, year and a half and some of the experiences that the students have narrated and then talk about an uh, exclusive toolbox for system identification. So we'll just go along. So initially I'll just give you a background. Obviously we all know that the most commonly used software for numerical computation and uh, scientific analysis is MATLAB. But then there are quite a few issues we have uh, seen that, so I'll just repeat a few of them. And of, of course the most governing factor is the cost factor and at present at IIT Madras, we use the version 6.1, it's a network licensed version and we have probably very few toolboxes at our disposal and the students do use their own free versions as have been uh, pointed out and as we all know, uh, in fact ironically high cost factors automatically means more free versions, ironically. Uh, but we don't want such free versions obviously. And the current problem as it, is, as it stands is that we are not, uh, we, have, we have made attempts to upgrade to the later versions of MATLAB, but then these attempts or efforts have not been successful so far, primarily because MATLAB is simply unaffordable, okay. So I'll just give you my personal views as such uh, about the usage of Scilab. Definitely Scilab has fulfilled uh, the needs as far as the uh, numerical computation power is concerned and also the uh, features that are available in terms of including it into a teaching curriculum. But yes, we all agree that there are quite a few issues that have to be resolved before making Scilab a complete success. Scilab has been wonderful and uh, has actually helped me a lot in uh, doing a lot of uh, research, coding and so on. But then there are some specific issues that really can uh, put off the user. And I'll tell you one very common uh, problem that actually one experiences is the repetition of, is the recalling of the commands that one uses. Okay, and it may sound very trivial, but I think if one wants to use the, uh, the, la the software in the long run and you're using it for extensive periods of time, then you want to be able to recall the command that you have used with ease and unfortunately that feature is still not available with uh, Scilab at the moment, okay. And secondly, teaching uh, Psycos, I think, uh, I know Psycos is a wonderful piece of uh, software and it has a lot of abilities but even recently as I was demonstrating Psycos to my students, the uh, exercise was not as smooth as I would have expected, for example, in demonstrating Simulink. I know that one should not end up comparing Psychos with Simulink, but then definitely if I don't, even if I am not comparing, the students obviously will end up comparing it and that's natural. So I think Psychos particularly has a long way to go uh, before actually becoming an integral part of the Scilab for simulating systems. Okay. Towards the end I'll talk about some other third party software which is built on Scilab which can also be used in uh, conjunction with Scilab. And the other point is the display of the list of variables. I know that by default when Scilab loads there are a bunch of variables that are created and then after you have worked for a period of time and you are looking at the list of variables that have been created the list of variables that the user has created gets also uh, displayed along with the list of variables that have been actually uh, created at the time Scilab launches. So that creates an and these are all, they sound trivial but then as I said, one, when one wants to, you, uh, one wants the user to use Scilab for long periods of time, it takes uh, these, trivia, these trivial issues become important. Now one of the uh, tools or one of the uh, procedures that's very common in linear system theory is to arrive at a linearized model from a non-linear system. So let's say I take a simple level system where there is a flow in and there is a flow out and I'm writing the 
differential equation to describe the dynamics of this continuous flow system. Incompressible fluid, we will like make the, all the nice assumptions, cross sectional area is uniform and so on. And when once one ends writing up the material balance for this equation, you end up with a simple equation. So this is the equation and these are the system parameters. The beta is nothing but the resistance offered at the outlet of the tank and the AC stands for the cross sectional area. So the, the underlying equation is nothing but the material balance. Okay. And essentially what happens is that when you write the differential equation, you end up with a nonlinear equation. But then if you want to use linear control theory, you want to linearize the system. And there is this lin command in Scilab, which is expected to do the job for you. And the way the lin command works is you are expected to write a function which returns the state derivative as well as the output. And this is what exactly I have done here in this code. It's a very simple code. And you simply supply this function uh, to the lin command. And I'm just showing you the sample results. The purpose is to show that there is a bug in the lin command. And this is, a, this is an important command that uh, people actually use in linear system theory to arrive at linearized models. Now, the, uh, the output that you see here is the uh, output from the lin command. And I have simply used the uh, tech print command, which is, uh, which is a nice feature in Scilab. And of course, it has some bugs as well. And you can see that there is an error, obvious error. The, what one would expect is when you linearize a nonlinear differential equation, and uh, typically the, out, the, uh, the output equation is always already linear. So you should expect that the matrix here, for those of you who are familiar with linear systems theory, the matrix C here should not contain a number like this. And for this particular example, C should be one and D should be zero and D is actually here. And I have given the theoretical answer here below to show that there is a bug, okay? And I'm not pointing out with a critical remark here or with a skeptical look, but I'm saying that there are some bugs which need to be fixed. Uh, uh, besides that, the control system toolbox is great. And this is an, imp this is an obvious bug and I think that definitely needs to be fixed. And I don't know where the problem lies whether the problem lies with the lin command itself or the link and or the underlying code. I, I didn't probe into this, but this is just a recent discovery. I know that there is a lin cos command where you can build the uh, block diagram in psycos where you can write the differential equation and you can write, you can build a block diagram for the nonlinear system, call the lin cos command and get the linear model. But then, of course, that doesn't justify the bug in the lin, lin command. And as I've already said, people are reluctant to use psychos. So I can't really suggest this as a solution, okay? So besides that, the control system toolbox, I have found it to be a very uh, nice toolbox to use and overall uh, Scilab along with control systems toolbox usage has been a very pleasant experience. But there are further developments needed if we want uh, to attract more users and some of the developments have suggested here. We need, for example, an exclusive toolbox for model predictive control. It need not be an exclusive toolbox. It can be integrated with the control systems toolbox. And likewise, for nonlinear control and adaptive control. And these are all very hot topics today and considered as a part of advanced process control. And I'm sure that these three tools will be very attractive to the industries as well. So I'll quickly move on to the uh, uh, core of this talk, where I want to talk of an exclusive toolbox for system identification. And for those of you who are new to system identification, system identification is the art and exercise of estimating dynamic models from uh, input-output data. So that's very succinctly put. And I call it SILID. And I'll just give you the current status of the applicability of SILAB as far as the CISID is concerned. There are some basic data fitting tools, such as the least squares fit and so on. And again, here, Within specific toolboxes, there are some redundancies. You have data fit, you have fit data, and so on. So the user is not really sure which one to use. And so that needs to be definitely sorted out. There is uh, a tool for estimating the RMAX model. Okay. And again, here, the difficulty here or the limitation here is that the RMAX model simply gives you the estimates of the input output model. 
but unfortunately does not give you the covariance of the parameter estimates or the parametric model that you have estimated okay i uh, i'm aware of a uh, econometrics toolbox known as grosser which does time series analysis but does not build an in uh, but does not give you an estimated input output model it's simply for time series analysis from an econometrics point of view there is a very good state space uh, model identification toolbox and i think it has uh, been obtained from slicot it's called slicot but again state space model identification the concepts the underlying theory is completely different from the concepts that uh, govern the estimation of the input output models so uh, really it's not directly usable as far as the input output model estimation is concerned what we need is a comprehensive set of tools that can allow us to estimate input output models with minimal dependencies on other toolboxes so uh, in the next couple of slides i'm going to talk of what are the expectations of such a toolbox what features need to be included from a technical point of view and also from a user friendliness point of view so the first thing that this toolbox should be able to do it should be able to handle input output data objects as a pair there and i'm not borrowing this idea as such from the beautiful toolbox that's available for system identification in matlab but then even from a conceptual point of view because system identification is concerned with estimating models from input output data so input output data is a pair and we we need to create a new probably object type or a data type which can actually uh, take in the input output data and treat that as an object for subsequent analysis so that's one and then we need pre techniques for pre processing the data already there's a command called dtrend which does that but that's i think that's not sufficient i'll talk about that later on and after doing this it should be able to compute the following which are currently lacking in scilab first it should be able to you, one should be able to compute the autocorrelation and the cross correlation functions i know these are technical terms apologize if uh, some of you are not able to follow but this is more i'm trying to convey this to the scilab team because it's an appropriate forum i thought and presently there is no explicit tool to compute an autocorrelation function or a partial autocorrelation function and so on and cross correlation functions yes there is one command but uh, it's still not up to the mark and that's my opinion and more importantly is the power spectrum calculation in scilab but essentially what happens with the c spec command is by default the cross spectrum for those of you uh, no signal processing it's a complex number but unfortunately it returns an absolute quantity which is not correct technically speaking and secondly as i uh, dug into the code there are some uh technical errors itself in fact this code has been apparently written as early as 1988 so even before scilab began so so i'm not sure if that's the reason that there are some bugs and with what intention the c spec intention the c spec command has been written then uh, also the window functions that are used to generate the uh, windows to estimate the power spectrum are not up to the mark in fact uh, if you compare it with the matlab's window function uh in it's much more comprehensive so i think we need to get it up to the mark because signal processing is one area which is not just uh of importance to system identification but also to control and many other uh applications so the signal processing part as far as the frequency domain analysis is not really up to the mark okay so the scilab toolbox should be able to do that and then it should also be able to estimate once these are done it should be able to estimate non parametric models which are again not available at all that is the when i mean non parametric when i say non parametric models i mean impulse response and step response model estimation from the data as well as frequency response and then the class of parametric models of this form where one should be able to estimate which is what is completely lacking at the moment uh to a certain extent the rmax model does for a special structure but then again what is more important is not the up, is not obtaining the model estimate but equally important is the covariance of the parameter estimates i mean it's, it's not sufficient to say well i have this model from the data but you should also be in a position to say how reliable the model is and that's what the covariance of the parameter estimates gives you okay and then once you have built the model you one wants to validate the model so the toolbox should be able to provide the residual analysis also be able to compare the 
response of the estimated model to the uh, actual response that you, one has observed experimentally and so on. So that has to be done. And then input design is where actually the current command is uh, truly lacking. There is a command called PRBS underscore A and it stands for, it, it, PRBS stands for pseudo random binary signal. And unfortunately, I, I, uh, this command is not again up to the mark. I have just quoted from the help document available here for the PRBS underscore A straight from Scilab. And it says essentially NC can be used to tell how many times a signal should change sign. And input design is an important task in system identification. This is done prior to the experimentation stage. And again here, unfortunately, there is no direct relation of this NC parameter with the frequency content that one desires to have in the input signal. So there is a problem there. And again, the limitation here is it is only limited to generating PRBS, but that's not the only signal that one desires to uh, design. There are other kinds of signals also. So the, the tool that, is, that, should, uh, that will be developed for input design should take into account all of this. And then, as I said earlier, data pre-processing is a very important step. In fact, it consumes probably 80% of your time in estimating a model. So presently, the dtrend command is pretty good. It actually removes the constant and the linear trends. But then uh, we don't have provision to remove outliers, missing data handling, irregular uh, data, and so on. And finally, the user-friendly features. After the model has been estimated, one should be able to present to the user the model in a neat, uh, just as we have a pretty print and so on. So we should have it in a pretty print form. And one should be able to actually, again, construct the estimated model in, in an object that is understood by Scilab and so on. Finally, after all this is done, one would definitely like to have a graphical user interface, which will, al which will be basically linked to all these functionalities. Okay? But that's secondary. At the moment, that is secondary. The, uh, whatever I've discussed earlier is important. And then last but not the least, as far as the Scilab toolbox is concerned, one would like to have advanced topics in ID as well to be included, such as nonlinear system identification, and then uh, the ability to handle irregularly sample data. This is a very common phenomenon, and so on, other topics. And so at the moment, what I have done is actually uh, I have written codes to compute the autocorrelation function, partial autocorrelation functions, and the uh, cross spectrum. Now I have written it correctly but still I need to do some more verification. And not only should these tools which compute ACF, PACF, and cross spectrum should give you the estimates of this, but they should also give you the standard errors of estimates. Okay, because one does not deal with deterministic signals all the time. You have measurements which are corrupted with noise. So that's important. And right now I'm currently involved, personally myself, and of course I've had also fruitful interactions with Professor Kanan Maudgalya here in developing specific codes to, uh, again, for, uh, for system identification and at by the personal level to enhance the teaching of these control-related courses. The last thing that I want to talk of here is the XML lab. I know it's a third-party product, but again, this XML lab actually stands for the uh, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. And this is a simulation authoring environment from where you can actually call MATLAB or Scilab and so on. And this has been written by these two authors here. And I have found XML Lab to be a very good simulation authoring environment for teaching purposes. The, the, I'll just tell you the difference very briefly between XML Lab and Psychos. Psychos is a fantastic piece of tool for simulating and for batch simulation and so on. But then suppose there is a situation, going back to the simulation of the level system, where I want to show to the students as I change the cross-section area, as I change the resistance, how does the time constant of the system change, how does the gain change, and so on, I'll have to probably, again, do psychos in batch simulation mode and so on. But then always, you know, we, we are all uh, vulnerable and uh, prone to seeing graphical user interfaces. XML Lab provides you built-in GUIs to actually use sliders and so on to animate and use interactively the uh, the objects that are present in GUI to change your system parameters and see the response. Okay, so uh, one of 
the goals, as you can see here, is to enhance teaching using XML and CELEB. And of course, I uh, probably am not aware of many other tools that have been built on similar lines. But from a research point of view, uh, I would like to actually contribute significantly as much as possible to develop the system identification toolbox for Scilab. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the following. It's not an exhaustive list. But first, the indo cent Center for the Promotion of Advanced Research for whatever we are having today as far as Scilab and this workshop is concerned. And uh, personally, would like to thank Professor Kanan Maudgalia here for taking care of the hospitality and all the administration. I think it's a wonderful job. And the Scilab team for the obvious reasons and IIT Madras again for obvious reasons. And thank you all for your attention.